Good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to New Heights Baptist Church. We're glad to see you today. Let's all stand. And we're going to sing, Come Christians, Join to Sing. We're going to sing all three verses, page 29. Come Christians, Join to Sing. On that first verse. Come Christians, Join to Sing. take your Bibles and turn to Psalm chapter 99 verses 7 through 9. Psalm 99 verses 7 through 9. Uh, This is the inspiration for number 386 in our hymnal, bowed on my knees and cried holy. I bowed on my knees and cried holy, holy, holy. I clapped my hands and sang glory, glory to the Son of God. Psalm 99, verses 7 through 9. He spake unto them, and they kept his testimonies and the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answerest them, O Lord our God. Thou wast the God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to be home. And I'm not talking about Texas or our house in Rowlett. I'm talking about this. This is home. This is family. The true family that I've been blessed to be part of because of the grace of God. Sometimes we don't realize what we have here until we go somewhere that doesn't have it. I'm glad we have a church where our pastor strives to be the friend of God. Yeah, I watched it. Who uses the King James Bible because there's so much going on out there in the name of religion, even Baptist churches, where that's not true. And so I thank God for this church and our pastor and for you, my brothers and sisters. I'm home. Well, not that home, but this home. One day, let's pray. Dear Lord, our God, we love you, Father. And it's our desire here today to praise your holy name, 
to honor you and glorify you in all that is said and done here today. We thank you, Father, for our brothers and sisters in Christ that encourage us, that we can be part of their lives and they're part of ours. Thank you, Father, for a pastor who stands true to the faith, desiring to please you and not men, who does not have an agenda, but has a calling and a purpose from God. And that's to pastor a local New Testament Baptist church for God's glory and God's honor. Who loves these people and desires to see us grow. To help us when we're down and when we're weak. To lift us up and to encourage us. To cry with us, to laugh with us. But most of all, to tell us the truth. Because the truth will set us free. Thank you, Father, for these that are here today. And if we have any visitors among us, we truly thank you for them. We just ask, Lord, that you would speak to us today through the power of thy Holy Spirit in your Holy Bible. So many times, Father, we take it for granted. But never let us take for granted your calling out of the world to serve you and to glorify you and honor you in all things in every place. Bless us again, we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, fishing poles were brought in yesterday, yesterday morning by the pastor, so I started thinking about what song can I mean? What are we gonna What are we gonna be doing? Number one, first. I mean, first of all, like, what is he planning on? He's gonna be throwing out something. I don't know what he's gonna be doing. He's gonna cast it into the crowd. I don't know, try to hook somebody, I don't know. But uh, I was like, what song can we sing? So I was like, throw out the lifeline. That's a good one right there. So we're going to sing throw out the lifeline. First, second, and last verses, page 354. Throw out the lifeline across the dark way. There is a brother whom someone should save. Somebody's brother. His peril to share. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting away. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is sinking today. Throw out the lifeline with hand quick and strong. Why do Terry, why linger so long? See, he is sinking, oh, hasten today, and out with the lifeboat, away they no way. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline, someone is drifting away. Amen. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline, someone is drifting away. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline, someone is sinking today. Amen. Great singing. At this time, Miss Debbie Curl is going to come sing a special. I better take this off. <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here too, Brother Rick, with my family. 
Um, we have just, Mike and I have just been in a whirlwind for about the last two weeks, and I know a lot of you know what that's like. People think because it's COVID, uh, we sit around the house all day, but that's not true. <laughs> so I hope you get a blessing from this song. My desire when I sing for the Lord is that He will be glorified and that the people will get something from the message in the song. One day a plain village woman Driven by love for her Lord uh, Could you start over, Brother Steve? I'm sorry. Sometimes I can't hear that good. I must be getting old. <laughs> One day a plain village woman Driven by love for her Lord Recklessly poured out a valuable essence Disregarding the scorn and once it was broken and spilled out The fragrance filled all the room Like a prisoner released from his shackles Like a spirit set free from the tomb broken and spilled out just for love of you Jesus my most precious treasure Lavished on thee Broken and spilled out And poured at your feet In sweet abandon let me be spilled out and used up for thee. Lord, you were God's precious treasure. His love and his own perfect son. Sent here to show me the love of the Father Just for love it was done And though you were perfect and holy You gave up yourself Willingly You spared no expense For my pardon You were used up And spilled out for me Broken and spilled out 
just for love of me, Jesus. Your most precious treasure lavished on thee. Spilled out and poured at my feet in sweet abandon, Lord, you were spilled out and used up for me. Abandon, Lord, you were spilled out and used up for me. Amen. Great song, Miss Debbie. I would have to make fun of you, though, a little bit. <clears throat> Pick on you, because I love you. I believe last time you sang on Sunday morning, you had to start over the song that time, too. <laughs> oh, man. And this is, I mean, this is recorded, going on YouTube and everything. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> We're still going to let you sing. We still love you and everything. All right, let's all stand. We're going to sing Jesus Saves. Pick on those that I love. Page 363, you're going to sing all four verses. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steep. Good. Well, our hearts, uh, of course, uh, go out to uh, D.D. Uh, today. Uh, God bless you, D.D., you and your family. I lost her uh, dad and, and is able to run out real quick to Tim Bagby's mother's uh, funeral. Found out that she was the church pianist uh, for years and years. Faithful mom and dad. 
And uh, he's blessed. I told him so. You're blessed to have such a good uh, mom and dad. And uh, so God bless you guys. And uh, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, uh, be yours. Thank you for being here today. And guests as well as uh, members, thank you for being here. Some people say you should never thank your church members for being here. Um, you know, because that's where they're supposed to be in the first place. Yeah. That's what they say. Uh, but I, you know, my mother told me to be thankful. So I'm, I'm thankful that you're here. Is that all right? All right. I'm thankful. Cheryl came all the way from California, not California now, but Arizona, to hear me preach this morning, all the way to hear me preach. God bless you and your little baby girl's no longer a baby girl so much, you know. She's uh, mostly grown up. Just graduated from high school. High school. Let me get it right. High school. Just graduated from high school. So God bless you and thank you for being here uh, with us. And uh, we look forward to next time we'll be able to get together and have some Brother Ray's hot sauce, our homie's hot sauce that he that he puts together. And welcome back to the Doffs, back among the living, you know, doing good. Got a good report from Brother John uh, Flores. Uh, yesterday he called, he was in good voice, laughing, and uh, we had a good time. It was good fellowship. You know, continue to pray for Brother Fred. He hasn't been eating too well during all of this. Of course, not much of an appetite, and then everything tastes horrible. And uh, so he's going to have a little bit more time to, to recover. But uh, Lord willing, you know, he'll do just that. And I told him, you tell Brother Fred, I, I have need of these sitting right here. He's one of my amen crew. He almost every Sunday has something positive to say, an encouraging word at the end of the service. You know, he's one of my Barnabas. You know, he's a great encouragement uh, to your pastor. And so I need him. I need him. I get some cross-eyed looks by some of you, so I need some encouragement along the way. But God bless you. Thank you for being here. Let's have prayer, and then we'll get into today's word. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We pray, Father, you'd bless us today. Lord, we ask that you would anoint the preaching your word, and it would find residence in hearts and minds and soul. For we all need this, Lord, in my estimation, and, and Lord, in the spirit of Christ, I think we all need it. There's not one man, there's not one woman that doesn't need this message. So, Father, I pray that you'd bless it to our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. You know, at any time, you never know what's going to happen, right? I mean, at any time, you just never know what's going to happen. It can be very serious be very serious, or it can be uh, less serious, um, uh, though alarming, you know, and anything in between. Like one of our elder ladies uh, the other day, she found a small snake in her bathroom. Found a small snake in, a snake in her bathroom, and uh, that's, that's pretty alarming. Wouldn't you agree with that? That's pretty alarming. If you don't think so, that's the lady, you know. Uh, but she found this in her bathroom, much like a, a long earthworm, but yet long enough to, to be able to uh, you know, give you one of those looks. And there she was, standing there in her bath gown, you know. And uh, there, there she was in the bathroom and alarmed by this. And she, she wanted to leave and go get a shoe or something, of course, that she could take him down and have him weighed in the balances, you know, and found uh, a warning. But she was nervous about that because, you know, if, uh, if she left, then, uh, you know, he might find a hiding place and you never know where that hiding place just may be. So she decided she didn't want to, to uh, leave, uh, leave him, and there he was in his beady-eyed meditation in the bathroom. And so what did, I'm here to tell you, what did this New Heights Baptist Church resourceful church member do? What did she do? Well, she looked for the most handy item that she could find right there on the counter. So she picked up, what did she pick up? She picked up the curling iron and let him have it. <laughs> Unfortunately, the curling iron was broken in the process, but so was the snake. <laughs> Job well done. She told her adult daughter who shops for her, well, I'm, I'm going to need another curling iron. <clears throat> well, the daughter, of course, she's, uh, well, Mom, why do you need another uh, curling iron? And, uh, and she had to give the answer why she needed another curling iron. So I wonder, Mrs. Moore, if you've gotten Mrs. Doak a new curling iron yet. <laughs> Have you bought your mom a new curling iron? Miss Doak. What a woman. Amen. What's over thy hand find to do? Do it with thy might. Take the curling iron and kill every snake you find. A few months ago, we wouldn't have thought this nation would become so divided by a case that's not even gone to court yet. But wait. You know those old commercials. But wait. A few months ago, we'd have never thought this nation and many, many other nations would go under what is called a widespread lockdown, shutdown for a worldwide pandemic. 
Now I know it's serious, but it's not a plague by far. But I know it's serious. But people are in a panic mode. And people from all walks of life are uptight. Go ahead and say amen. It'll help you today. Amen. They're uptight. And worse, we're attempting to be experts. We're attempting to be experts. Now this has been far, far, far worse than Monday morning quarterbacking after Sunday's football game. Far, far worse. Oh my word, people have lost their gourds and I don't even, I'm not even on Facebook and people have lost their gourds. I understand if you frequent Facebook, it's much, much worse than even what I'm aware of. It is not likely that anyone in this room will come up with a vaccine. It is not likely the most anybody wants to comment about this will come up with a vaccine. All right? Not likely at all. But even the experts are conflicted. Spurting one thing this month, and if you go back and you listen to something they said a couple months ago, they're spurting something completely different. But think about it. If the experts are spurting this thing over here, and then this over there, and I know spurting is not a word. Miss Sherry, don't send that text. Amen. You word Nazi, you. If they're doing this, really think about it. How much worse is it for the rest of us normal people to be so dogmatic about something we know very little about? Thank you. And this has caused even other serious issues. This whole issue has caused other serious issues. No, and I'm talking about the public school uh, system and all about getting the kids back in school. But to me, the, the greater concern is this supposed job of how the public school system is supposed to be taking over all the proper cares that a family are supposed to be doing. Have you noticed that? The list, I mean, it's incredibly long, the burden they're placing on our school teachers. I mean, basically taking every child in the country to raise. That's not their job. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about suicide. Suicide. Dr. Lauren Breen, 49 years old, emergency room doctor up in New York. She's working 18 hours a day, sleeping in the hallways where she could get back to work early the next morning. She's a good doctor, but when the good doctor contracted this COVID virus herself, she took a week and a half off only to suffer from exhaustion when she went back to work. Her family brought her to stay with them in Virginia where the father went on to say that she seemed to be very detached, very detached from the, even the family. She was also deeply disturbed by the things that she had witnessed and the suffering that, of course, she witnessed. And, of course, since she was an ER doctor, she, she was... Uh, not un unconditioned, you know, to tragedies and things along that line, but this was something different. But on the last uh, Sunday of April, she was rushed uh, to uh, the hospital with self-inflicting wounds. Now, this is not some weak soul, all right, that's emotionally, they're a cripple and sucking on their finger all throughout the week. And she died from her wounds. Suicide. There's been a surge of suicides all around the world. And yes, even in our own country related to all of this. Spiritually, the world, even Christians are biting their, their nails to the quick. And then spiritually, I would say that's not even good enough. They're gnawing on the nubs. I'm talking spiritually. Gnawing on our nubs about this about this. What would we do if it were a plague? About this. The Bible says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 So what I think we need is a good fishing break. A good fishing break. I mean, lay down the phone, get off the TV, turn the radio off, that type of fishing break. We need to go a fishing. Psalm 27, if you would, Psalm 27. Today I have some 
good spiritual medicine for each and every one of us, God's people to take. And I think it's paralleled nicely in this little object lesson. But my spiritual advice would be for everyone to go fishing and leave the cares, the frustrations, the perplexities, the worrying about this mess behind. Leave it behind. It's making us sick. It's making our spirits sick. And brothers and sisters, this should not be so. This should not be so. But you don't need to take any fishing pole with you. Not on this fishing trip. Now I'm speaking spiritually so you have to make some connections. You don't need to take any uh, fishing pole with you. I have a fishing pole right here. This fancy pretty thing was given to my daughter Kelsey by Travis. This is a bait caster. This is, uh, this is one of those fancy, fancy uh, fishing poles that the professionals like to use. And man, I mean, it's got the leverage, it's got everything. I mean, it's got everything you want. If you are a tournament fisherman, this is the type of fishing pole that you would use. Now, my daughter is not a tournament fisherman, but he's hoping one day. But I hope if they, she ends up being a tournament fisherman, she smokes him every time they go out. <laughs> but this, this is the type of fishing pole that I do not normally use this type of fishing pole because I find myself picking out the crow's nest on this thing more often than not when, than enjoying fishing. So I would, though this is a great fishing pole and it, it will work, it'll do the job. It has a lot of moving parts and man, this thing can make a crow's nest like nothing, nothing else. And so this is not the particular uh, uh, fishing pole I'd suggest that you use. Now the second one I'd like to show you is called a spinning reel. And this is almost exclusively uh, what I would use. Matter of fact, I used it just the other day out there fishing with Brother Moore. And it's a spinning, spinning reel and uh, it is... Uh, it's a very good fishing pole, but even this one, you can get backlashes, you know, on this. You can get a crow's nest built up on this, and I end up more often than not uh, just taking out my knife if I, you know, spend more than three or four minutes trying to untangle it. And, you know, when you need glasses, when you get a tangle line these days, man, that is a problem. I'm telling you, that is a problem. So what do you normally do? Well, you get your knife out. You know, get your knife and just cut the line and retie the thing and you'll get back to fishing faster than you would if you just sat there for the next 35, 45 minutes trying to untangle the stupid thing. All right? It's okay if I call it a stupid thing. I'm talking about this object, not you. All right? I mean, it's a stupid thing. But this, this, this has a lot of also moving parts. And when you cast it, you know, you've got to do a number of things. You want me to show you? All right, you ready, Virginia? Here, I'm going to cast it. You ready? You say, that's got treble hooks on it. No, catch it. Okay, catch it. I'm pretty good with this. Uh, no, I better not do that. It might hit Miss Brenda back behind you and snatch that mask right off of her face. But this, this, this spinning reel, it also has moving parts and things can break. As a matter of fact, this little uh, screw right over here on this side, you got to every once in a while make sure that stays uh, snug because if that comes out, your handle comes out, and man, you just lost your trip. You have to go back to the hill. And the fish, more often than not, are biting right there when you have to go. So this, this is not even the fishing pole I'd recommend. Now, this next one, Man, this is what normally the beginners like. I have here a nice Zepco 33. You can cast this pole. Hey, listen, this one will let you stand on the bank and cast out there in the deep, you know, where you can get that big mouth bass. You know what I mean? This one, you could cast probably a thousand times and not get a backlash. I mean, every day. I mean, you could spend a long time before you would find a problem with this type of uh, rod and reel. Zebco 33. How many of you use this type of rod and reel in your life? I mean, most anybody, if you've ever been fishing, you at least probably started with something like this. And this is real good. As a matter of fact, we just got this one the other day. I had Brother Travis go to the store and buy this for, uh, for me for the illustration. And this one's going to go to the child who exhibits the best Christian attitude during this corona season in our church. Brother Ben's going to make that determination in his time. So this one, it's, going, it's a fine. I told Brother, he, he, he went and he sent me a picture of like a 1099 one. And I said, oh no, get a good one. You know, because we're going to give this to one of our children. And I don't want them to get the best fish they've ever caught and have the fishing pole just break. And so this one's going to go to one of our children who exhibits the best Christian attitude during the corona season. That all right with you? That's what this one's going to go for. But this is not even the one that I'd recommend for you. Because why? It still has moving parts. And what we need right now is not a bunch of moving parts. 
So I'm not going to suggest that you even take this fishing with you, spiritually speaking. What's next? Now, this is what I'm talking about. Spiritually, in my mind, this is what we need to go fishing with. Look at here. There are no mechanical parts. None. All you have to do is flip it out there and wait. Look how easy. Flip it out there and wait. You don't have to jerk your pole, you know, just right to get the right presentation. You know what I'm saying? Come on, Travis, say amen. You don't have to do that. You don't have to worry about reeling it in. You don't have to worry about getting your drag set just right. You don't have to do any of that stuff. And you know what? You can use this day in and day out. And man, you can catch a lot of fish with a good old-fashioned cane pole. You say, I don't believe that. Well, my grandmama would come up out of the grave and tell you otherwise. She's probably caught more fish than all of us combined. And she caught them with a cane pole, just like this. And then what we need to do, we need to find us a good seat, a good chair. And we need to get out on the river bank and not walk up and down the river bank like we got some disease or something. But to just sit down in a good chair, relax a little bit. <sighs> Maybe get us a good soft drink or a thermos of good coffee. Find us a good floppy fishing hat to put on, you know. Amen? You with me? And what we need to do now, and I'm speaking spiritually, what we need to do now is we get to set back and put our bobber in there, rear back a little bit, feel the breeze on the back of our neck. We need to Watch the clouds dance across the sky, God's handiwork of this day. Hear the birds as they sing their special tune for just this day, sent from God above. Kick off our shoes. Wiggle our toes out a little bit, you know. Relax. And if we catch a fish, we pull him in. But if we don't catch a fish, Everything else is still just right. And we need to learn how to be still. And know that He is God. Am I preaching? Amen. I'm trying to. The Lord used such tactics. I am saying we don't need high mechanical devices right now. We need to learn and lean on the simplicity that is in Christ. Be still. And know that he is God. I'm not God. He is God. Are you with me? Can I go on from here? All right, we're going to get into Psalm 27. I almost just want to stay right there. Almost. Miss Tony was gracious enough to allow me to use her, her cane pole. Now, Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still. Be still. David speaks here, of course, of a sure confidence in his God. In chapter 27, his love of communion with God and encourages everybody else to come get you some. That's basically what the psalm says. Psalm chapter 27, look at verse 1. The Lord is my light in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So God gives his children three things, even from this verse 1. Letter A, illumination. Understanding. Spiritual Understanding. Number two, he gives his children salvation. Pure and sweet, wonderful grace of the Lord. And then letter C, invigoration, strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. 
Not my intellect. Not my ciphering. But the Lord is my strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? Then verse 2. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart set unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger, lest thou hast been, thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a what path? Cain pole path. Plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now the basis of waiting on the Lord is trusting in the Lord because he's good and that he provides providential care to us. That's why we learn to wait on the Lord. The more we become confident, confident in the Lord and in his goodness of our life, the more we can honor and glorify our Lord. I know that my Savior lives. I know that he will deliver me. And I know he will take care of my life and not forsake me. The more I learn to wait, the more peacefully I can live in my own heart. And then more peacefully I can live in all of my relationships to others. The less I trust in the Lord, the more contentious I become even in my own spirit. And the more contentious I become in my relationships with other people. Can I hear an amen? There are times in life that we make matters worse. There are times in life that we make matters worse by acting and by fretting. The Bible says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Brother Ben said the other day, when he had a tickle in his throat, he says, every time I get a tickle in my throat, I think I got the virus. Somebody was a barbecuing. <laughs> well, he's not alone, is he? It's probably crossed our mind. <clears throat> Half the people in Texas are coughing because of allergies. Get a little tickle in your throat. Oh, no. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Now, I agree with Solomon and our Lord. There's a time for everything, right? There's a time for everything. I'm not advocating inactivity. But I'm suggesting waiting is an activity. Waiting is an activity. I'm a firm believer that every man and every woman ought to have some type of hobby that requires patience. And fishing is one of them. They don't call it catching fish. They call it fishing. Fishing. Now you probably notice that in this world we're not in charge. You say, if I were, yeah, if you were, you'd make a mess. And so would I. We're not even charged over many of the details in our own life. We cannot control our hair loss. Much less the rain. So why do we then start acting and thinking like we're God somehow? That's a good time to say amen. 
The Lord pointed this out in Matthew chapter 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye have put on. Is not the life more than raiment and the body than raiment? I'm sorry, the life more than meat and the body more the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. It, uh, yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34. Therefore take no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Waiting is not easy. Brother Houston, as I get older, it gets a little easier. It gets a little easier. Some things do come with a little age that you learn better a little bit of patience. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Sounds like something needs to be driven home. What's the point that needs to be driven home? That God's people learn how to wait on the Lord. And that waiting is an activity. Let me give you some additional verses on this. Psalm 37, 34. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land which the wicked are cut off. Thou shalt see it. Proverbs 20, verse 22. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Can I make a little helpful comment here? Civil disobedience should be a very high bar not a low bar. Civil disobedience should be a high bar, not a low bar. If we have made it a low bar, it's far more likely to demonstrate a rebellious spirit in us. Anybody want to say amen? That's a good place to say amen right there because it's true. Listen, we are more limited by a speed limit than we are a mask. We are more limited by a speed limit than a mask. Now maybe I better not say something like that because some of you may take that to mean, well, I'm going to go run some speed zones, you know. Well, the man will be waiting on you to give you a ticket to go do that. Psalm 25.3, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Psalm 25, 21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Psalm 130, verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait in his word, do I hope. Isaiah 30, verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may uh, be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait on him. Boy, I want some of that. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Oh, that's my phone. That's my phone. I got a text. Oh, yeah. I, I, I saw that too. Oh, Facebook. Did you see that? I can't believe they would say that. That doctor, who does that doctor think he is? And the politicians, they, they're just out of their ever loving mind. Is that waiting? Being quiet? No. Let me uh, profoundly demonstrate waiting and being quiet.
If this is annoying to you, you're no good at waiting. You say you tossed it back in the same hole, preacher. I know that. You want to have eyes to discern, ears to discern? Isn't that what the scripture teaches us? The type of people that we should be at peace with our God, peace in our hearts, in our minds. Amen. Now, Let's get into Psalm 27. To wait requires us to humble ourselves. Look at verse 1. The Lord is, not I am, the Lord is. Verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. One man wrote this, a delay is better than a disaster. A delay is better than a disaster. Another one says, a handful of patience is worth more than an inflated bushel of brains. Oh, you like that one? I'll give it to you again. A handful of patience is worth more than an inflated bushel of brains. Patience. One minute of patience may, in fact, grant you ten years of peace. Patience. You know, the bottom line is we do not know what's best. God knows what's best. And if we are going to get anywhere in this world, we have to humble ourselves and realize He's God and I'm not. So number one, to wait is to humble ourselves. Number two, to wait is to look to the Lord for His provisions and in His time. To wait is to look to the Lord for His provisions and in His time. Look at verse 1 again. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Look at verse 3. Though an host should camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. Verse 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Look at verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let me give you a verse from old Mr. Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. There's the lesson. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In due time. Do time. Casting all your care upon him. Well, Lord, I'll cast a little bit of my care on you and I want to keep the rest for myself because I want to worry myself to death. That's not what it says. Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Patience, by the way, means waiting without anxiety. I'm waiting, preacher. Preacher. No, you're not waiting. You're fretting. You're fretting. You're anxious. Number three, to wait is to indeed keep the Lord's will for your life. To wait on the Lord. Look at verse four. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What is God saying? What is this psalm? What's David saying? He said, I want to obey God. I'm going to, while I'm waiting, I'm going to obey God all the days of my life. Behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Verse 6. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. 
I will admit to you that patience can be bitter to us, but the fruit is sweet. The fruit is sweet. It is God's will that we learn how to wait on Him. Some at better are better at waiting than others. When I was younger, I was not as good about waiting as I am now. Somebody says, are you going to sit there all day and wait until that deer walks by? Yep. <laughs> then I'm going to give him a touch. And I'm going to clean him up, take him home and feed my family. And any church members that happen by. Amen. Waiting. Number four. To wait is to give God time to work all things after the counsel of His will. To wait is to give God the time to work all things after His counsel, not our whims. Who's the sovereign here? Well, it's not us. It's not us. If we were in charge, we'd make a bigger mess than what's already here. Verse 13 said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, if I didn't believe God's good and God in His time will take care of all of this business, I would faint. And yes, you would. But if you have trust in God that He will take care of this and He will do it in His own counsel. And He doesn't even ask our opinion. Why does God need our opinion? He's God. You know the song, He's Able? It's a good one just now. Sing it with me. He's able, He's able, I know He's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, He's able, I know He's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He heals the brokenhearted and sets the captive free. He makes the lame to walk again and He calls the blind to see. Peekaboo, he's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Is that not good medicine? That's good medicine. Never think that God's delays are God's denials. You never know all that he's doing. You never know. So hold on, hold fast, hold out. For we know that all things work together for good in the love of God to them who are the called according to His purpose. To wait in the Lord is to ultimately trust God. Brothers and sisters, you trust God to save you. What should have changed? Keep trusting in the Lord. You can trust Him with your life. You can trust Him with your life. You can trust Him with the things that everybody else is fretting about. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Do you need strength? You're not going to find it on Fox News. Certainly not on CNN. You're not going to find it from the next newscast that comes out of the White House or the CDC. You're certainly not going to find it on Facebook, on the chat lines, but you will find it in the Lord if you have enough sense to look there. You will find it there. Hey! Spiritually, let's go fishing. And rest in the simplicity and the all-sufficiency of Jesus Christ. Our Lord. And when you lay your head on your pillow tonight, brothers and sisters, be at peace. Be at peace. Let's stand. Lord, you are a wonderful God. And we need you every day, all day. 
And there's not a man, there's not a woman, not a boy and girl here that doesn't need to be reminded that there is a God who loves us and cares for us and knows every detail about everything. And he just says, son, daughter, give me your hand and trust me. Now listen, I'm working things out and I need you to trust me. Do you trust me? Yes, Father, I trust you. Do you really trust me? You're not going to understand everything that happens. You're not going to understand everything even that I do. But do you love me? Yes, Father, I love you. You know I love you. Yes, Father, I know you love me. Then trust me. And be at peace. Bless us to that end this day. Lord, somebody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, they'll never know the peace of God that passes understanding until they turn their life to Christ and say, Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I want you as my Savior. But those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we can sure get all up tight. And we need a healthy reminder. Hey, let's go fishing and rest in the Lord. Wait on the Lord to work all these details out after his good counsel. In Jesus' name. Amen. We sing freely, freely as the hymn of invitation. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. Can you hear? Is this my still on? Sing with me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to me. He loves me so. He loves me so, you personally, yes. He loves me so, he loves me so, he's so good to me. God bless you. Go in the peace of the Lord. Brother Cole dismisses. Lord, we thank you so much for your word and for the peace that you bring. Lord, we can rest in you fully and completely, knowing you've got everything covered. You take care of everything. We won't have to worry about a thing. We love you for that, and we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy towards us. Though we get distracted with so many things, and this is going on, and we run over here and then run over there, and Minds going every which direction. We get distraught. But Lord, we know we can rest in you. And we thank you so much for that. Just bless us this week and help us just to, to remember what Pastor preached about this morning and to do a little fishing. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.